Good evening all, this is the Mad Monarchist with the politically incorrect truth about the Mexican Empire. Talking about the empire of Emperor Maximilian, the French, Cinco de Mayo, that whole period. Because if you go to school in Mexico, or even in the United States to the extent which is, it is covered at all, then you will know the basic story about Emperor Maximilian on one side, President Benito Juarez on the other side, and everyone in Mexico will say Benito Juarez was the good guy, Emperor Maximilian was the bad guy. And uh, as I said, to the extent that it's covered in the United States, they'll say the same thing, and you will find out there's a very good reason for that. But the politically incorrect truth is that Emperor Maximilian was actually the good guy, and President Juarez was the bad guy. He was not the figure who was representing freedom and liberty and all of that kind of good stuff that everyone loves so much. Uh, in fact, Mexico was better as an empire. In fact, it was one of the rare periods of actual good government Mexico has ever had. Contrary to what most people are taught in Mexico, there was really very little freedom under the Republic as it existed under Benito Juarez. Mexico was better as an empire. There was not much freedom under the Republic. For example, under the Republic, the Constitution that President Juarez enacted, and he drew up most of it himself, the state confiscated all church land, and even more than that, they said that the church cannot own property at all. So they, they took it all away, and they said, by the way, you can't buy any more either. You can't buy it back. You are not allowed to have any property. You are to be completely dependent on us. They also made it against the law for politicians to even attend church. If you were a Mexican politician, you could not go to mass. It was against the law. They would not allow priests to go out in public, or brothers and sisters, whoever, to go out in public wearing clerical dress. Not a lot of freedom of religion there. Not a lot of freedom of expression there. Uh, they said there would be fewer holidays, because back then the holidays were all where the word holiday originally comes from, holy days. They were all holy days. And they cut down on those, so there was less holidays. That meant more days that people had to work. That wasn't very fun. Little known fact, uh, not many people, I don't think even in Mexico many people know this, President Juarez actually tried at one point to set up his own pope so he could have his own subservient puppet to just to go along with whatever he said. Now that didn't, most people don't know that because it really went nowhere and it was kind of embarrassing and so they, they dropped the idea pretty quick and tried to forget about it. And uh, when it comes to the church, most people today, when we have so much secularism and anti-clerical feelings that are pretty rampant nowadays, they say, well, we don't really care. They confiscated the church's property, so what? If it happens to the church, they don't care. If it happened to somebody else, they would care. Well, guess what? It did happen to somebody else, because the corrupt Republican leaders in Mexico at the time used the law that was supposed to be about taking the church's property and ended up using that to confiscate lands from the indigenous people, the Indians, uh, which they don't call Indians in the United States anymore. I don't know if they have a politically correct word in Mexico or not, but used to they called them Indians, Indios, same as other people. And they lost a lot of their land in this too. Of course, a lot of the land the church had was to support the Indians and so that was gone, but then they also expanded that and started taking property from the Indians themselves. Which is why when the French came and then later Emperor Maximilian came, most of the Indians sided with Emperor Maximilian. Even though Benito Juarez was held up as being a native son of Mexico, you know, he was an Indian. He was, I think, a, a Zapotec Indian, if I'm not mistaken. And the fact is, most of the Indians did not like Benito Juarez. They supported the emperor because the republic had treated them like dirt, taken their property. And, of course, 
not many people are really aware of this either, President Juarez was never elected. When, we, I mean, when he first came to power, he came to power by succession from the Constitution he had written, and he was not elected by the people when he first became President of Mexico. And he was not above killing his political opponents. And he, we know that in violation of his Constitution, he ended up serving for life. So what do you call somebody who is not elected, holds total political power, has his enemies killed, and rules for life? Does that sound like a dictator, maybe? Doesn't exactly sound like a liberal democratic president. Another thing they will say to attack the empire is to say that it was illegitimate. It was just, you know, the French came in, they set this thing up. It was all completely Ill illegitimate, done completely against the will of the Mexican people. Not true. Politically incorrect truth is the conservatives in Mexico had just as much right to President Juarez to power because they were fighting for power. It was a civil war, and the conservatives, they, they sort of lost round one. Juarez takes over, and then they come in, the French help the conservatives, and they win round two. So if you say, well, they took power by force, that's, that doesn't give them a right. Well, that's the same way Juarez came to power. He took power by force, too. And the, the junta that was established originally by the Mexican conservatives, you know, once the French had, had taken Mexico City, they restored the freedom of the church. So they're already moving in the direction of more freedom than existed under the Republic. And they only established the monarchy by vote. It was put to a popular referendum. Emperor Maximilian would not accept the throne any other way. And you will always hear people say, trying to defend the Republic, that, well, the referendum was, was illegitimate. It, it wasn't really fair because the people were, were ignorant. You know, they were ignorant, illiterate peons who didn't know what they were voting for which is pretty insulting to the Mexican people, for one thing, to say that you know they didn't know what they were voting for. Well then, if you're gonna say that, then you have to say that about every election held in Mexico. Except for the ones where they say, well, maybe only the elites can vote or something. Well, no one would call that democratic. If the referendum they had in Mexico that favored the monarchy was illegitimate, then so was every other election referendum vote they ever had. The voting public was the same. And no matter what they say about it, it's important to remember, as I said before, nobody voted for Juarez to be president when he first became president. So no matter what kind of vote it was, Emperor Maximilian was the only one people voted for. They never had the option of voting for Juarez when he first came to power. So Emperor Maximilian, the monarch, was more democratic in the way he came to power than President Juarez was. And on the traditional side of things, Emperor Maximilian, uh, who was an Archduke of Austria from the Habsburg dynasty, was a descendant of Emperor Charles V, King Carlos I of Spain, who was the monarch when the Spanish came to Mexico and set up the country. It first became, you know, Christian country as we know it today. And so he had that legitimacy going, going for him. And he was supported by a broader coalition originally than President Juarez was. Juarez was just supported by the very radical, anti-clerical leftists. Emperor Maximilian was supported by a much wider uh, coalition of people. They didn't all stick with him, unfortunately. But he was supported by, by traditional conservatives. He was supported by the more the more radical reactionaries. He was supported by the moderate, um, the moderate liberals, sort of classical liberals supported him. And there might not have been a great deal of variety there, but he was supported, as I said, by the Indians and native people tended to support him. He had a much wider base of support than President Juarez had. And Emperor Maximilian was not a bad guy. Despite what you may have heard, he was not the bad guy in this fight. And he showed how things would be different in the way he governed, the way he ruled, the changes he, he made, 
and a lot of people try to make it into a racist thing. Say, so, well, Benito Juarez was an was a native. He was an Indian. He was a Mexican, and Emperor Maximilian. He was this white European, this white guy with blonde hair and blue eyes, and and you know he's you know they bring up the evil evil white people thing, the evil racist white people. Maxim, Emperor Maximilian was not a racist, and you can see that easily in the top generals that he appointed. He appointed somebody from all the major racial groups to his top military command. He had uh, an Indian general, he had a Criollo general, a, a, a Mexican of Spanish blood, and he had uh, the, his third top general was a mestizo, which is a mixture of European and native blood, which most Mexicans are. All three were represented. And Emperor Maximilian did not favor just the rich and the powerful, which is often he's often accused of. That wasn't true. And in fact, he lost a lot of their support because he didn't give them any special favors. And as I said, the Indians supported Emperor Maximilian. He was the one who gave them back their rights, gave them back their property. And he stood up to the French to preserve Mexican rights. A lot of people try to make out that he was a puppet of the French, just went along with anything they said. Not true. There was always friction between him and the French. And Maximilian stood up to them whenever he thought the rights of Mexico were being infringed upon. Because he took his oath that he took at his coronation as Emperor of Mexico very seriously. And Mexico was his country. He made a firm commitment, and he wasn't going to let the French, whoever it was, do anything to infringe the sovereignty of his country. And, of course, when they talk about Emperor Maximilian being the villain, someone is always going to bring up the so-called Black Decree that said that any rebel taken in arms could be summarily executed. You know, they would just take them out and shot. If anyone taken with arms would be taken out and shot. In the first place, the Black Decree was not as bad as it sounds. For one thing, it was after all organized resistance to the empire had been crushed. The war had been practically won. Emperor Maximilian controlled almost the whole of Mexico. Benito Juarez was on the run up along the Texas border, up around El Paso, and at any moment was ready to cross over into the United States if he ever was in danger of being captured. He had no effective government. There was no organized military resistance. They had just dispersed into basically gangs of bandits. So at that point, they said, okay, this is not really a war anymore. These people are just criminals. And so they said, if you are a rebel and we catch you with arms, then you can be executed. Now, not many people were. The truth is, Emperor Maximilian, he was a very kind man, he was very soft-hearted, and he w pardoned almost everybody who applied for a pardon. He ended up pardoning them, and some of his own people were rather frustrated that they keep capturing rebels, and Emperor Maximilian would give them a pardon and let them go when they promised they're going to be good, you know, and they usually weren't. But another thing they don't ever tell you is that the Black Decree, so-called, was not the first Black Decree. There was actually an earlier Black Decree that President Juarez issued. And it was much worse than the one Maximilian issued. Back when the war first started, he issued a decree that said anyone who gives any aid to either the French or the Mexican conservatives will be shot. Okay, and this is a president who had put in the Constitution, which he wrote and which he was alleging to uphold, he says he's upholding the Constitution of the Republic, that forbid the death penalty. It's a very hypocritical move, but President Juarez says, no, anybody, not just who, who fights against me, like Maximilian said, no, n not even anybody just who, who fights against me, even if you just help those who are fighting against me, you will be killed. So you could be a Mexican and say you just gave a dying Frenchman some water or something. You could be shot for that. That was the real Black Decree, and you never hear about that one. 
And of course, they always say Emperor Maximilian sold out Mexico. He sold it out to French interests or European interests or whatever. Not true. He did not sell out Mexico. The person who did sell out Mexico was Benito Juarez. He violated his own constitution to stay in power. He violated his own constitution to, exec to execute his political enemies. And he was given huge support from the United States because he was willing to sell out his country. And you don't have to take my word for it. All you have to do is get on your Google machine and look up the McLean-Ocampo Treaty. And you will see that what, how the extent to which President Juarez was willing to sell out his country. According to this treaty, which Juarez agreed to, he signed it. He gave away territory to the United States. He gave away trade routes to the United States. He allowed American forces to occupy Mexico. It allowed American forces to intervene in Mexico at will. And he gave away all of this, basically sold the sovereignty of Mexico completely for $4 million. And the only reason the McLean Ocampo Treaty never went into effect was because the United States Senate never ratified it. Juarez agreed to it. He was fine with it, but it was the United States, the Senate, the United States didn't ratify it, so it never went into effect. And all of that was done in 1859, long before the Empire, long before Emperor Maximilian, so you can't say that it was done at a, at a moment when Juarez was just desperate to, to stop the invaders or something like that. It was done in 1859, long before Emperor Maximilian was even on the scene. And finally, another thing that people will say is that the the Republicans, the Juaristas, were the ones who were who were the little guys. Everyone wants to cheer for the underdog. They were the plucky little guys, you know, the poor little weaker side that was fighting against the overwhelming forces of the empire and the imperials, imperialistas. Not true. The imperial side was the one fighting the odds. Thousands of United States troops. Civil War veterans, hardened veterans of the American Civil War, fought for Benito Juarez. They gave him, after the American Civil War was over, they gave him every kind of material aid the United States did. Because Juarez was like uh, the United States' man in Mexico. They gave him guns, they gave him ammunition, they gave him war materials of every kind. There were whole Mexican units that were uniformed just like American Union soldiers in the Civil War. They had the latest repeating rifles, they had the latest rifled artillery from the United States, and the Imperial forces had none of that. The best stuff they had uh, was what the French brought with them, and when the French were intimidated by the United States into pulling out of Mexico, they took all of that stuff with them. And so in the end, it was the Imperial side that was the side with every disadvantage. They were the side that was outnumbered, they were the side that was outgunned. And that's the politically incorrect truth. And Emperor Maximilian's vision would have made Mexico a great and major power. He wanted Mexico to be the sort of the center, the center of the Americas. He envisioned, okay, the United States is going to dominate North America. That's just a given. The empire of Brazil will dominate South America. He was very fond of Brazil. He visited there when he was younger and the empire of Mexico would dominate the center. And he envisioned it being sort of like uh, the glory days of Constantinople, bridging, bridging the two continents. And he set a perfect example in his, his last stand he made in his heroic death, instead of escape, which he had every opportunity to do, in very stark contrast to the Republican dictators that Mexico has had, who usually when they see that things are going against them, they're going to lose. They empty the treasury, stuff their pockets full of money, and they leave the country, go into exile, and live like kings for the rest of their life. Emperor Maximilian gave away, literally gave away the last peso out of his pocket to the poor in the city where he was besieged and shared the privations of his men. He's out there sleeping on the lines, you know, under a blanket with the rest of them. And he had every opportunity to escape. He could have left with the French. Even some of the Juaristas were willing to sort of look the other way and let him escape, but he wouldn't do it. 
because he said, you know, that would be that would be cowardly, and because he swore an oath to Mexico at his coronation, which, as I said, he took very seriously. This was his country, and he would die for it. And he asked them, when he was given the chance to escape, well, what are you going to do to my generals? His two top generals, uh, Miguel Miramon and Tomas Mejia, were with him, and they said, well, we're going to execute them, which... I repeat, was a violation of the Constitution, President Juarez himself wrote. But he said, well, how can I, you know, go back and live happily in my castle in Italy knowing that these men are going to die because of their loyalty to me? So no, he was just as loyal to his men as they were loyal to him, and so he died alongside them. And even a lot of his enemies had to admit that he died like a hero and he was maybe the most the most selfless and the most noble upright leader that Mexico ever had and that's the politically incorrect truth about Emperor Maximilian and the Mexican Empire take care we all go a little mad sometimes haven't you